afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Swapna Yasarapu. I'm going to talk to you about <laughs> our innovations in the zone storage area. Um, I'm in the data center um, devices BU, and I focus on data center SSDs. So as I talk about the zone storage, I'll give you a few examples around the SSDs. Of course, it applies to both SSDs and HDDs at the end of the day. So let me just first start by talking about why. Why zone storage for us, right? Why is that an initiative that's important, and why are we doing this? Ultimately, for us, it's the platform that enables open, scalable data center architectures to deploy storage, whether that's HDD or flash-based storage, for the zettabyte, zettabyte era that Phil talked about just now, right? There's over 100 zettabytes that we expect in the market or in the industry by 2023. What that really drives is we need to deploy storage with more efficiency at a better TCO um, to consume and store the amount of data that's at hand. So if we peel back a little bit and I talk about um, what is this zettabyte scale and where is that coming from, just to kind of give you a little base on why zone storage. Number one, as we look at the growth of data, it's increasingly coming from unstructured data sources. So we've been in the structured sense, but as we move towards the zettabyte, large portions of new data is created in an unstructured manner. What do I mean by that? There's more data that's coming out of IoT and Edge through video, through smart video, to be more specific, on top of it, through telemetry, and if we look at all of this data, it's unstructured. It's not in a database. It's actually just coming out from various end devices. And if you look at all of these expanded workloads, a larger portion of these workloads are sequential in nature, more and more so than if we looked at more traditional OLTP types of workloads. Now, we can take advantage of this knowledge and intelligence of the data as you organize this data more intelligently to take advantage of that sequentiality. So if you look at that and say, how does that apply to AIML? If you put the data in larger chunks that can be used for, number one, ingest under AIML, two, for, in, for inference, and ultimately to apply that for training, using that efficiency is what helps uh, with how we organize the data, uh, we consume the data. Zoned? SSDs, mm -hmm. and each each zone is like a different class of technology, like QLC, MLC, TLC, SLC kind of things. Is so that we'll come? I'll come to that. There's nothing in the actual zone storage initiative that prevents it from being that way. How but it gets implemented really depends on how the customer will consume. And as we know, all technologies will start simple, and then you'll build on top of it. And, so, and, the, and the zones are not fixed, they're flexible across the NAND's address space, I guess? Uh, that is correct. A zone is a zone. How you consume that zone is holistic. However, it can be either pulled together and or disaggregated, depending on how you're using it. And I'll get to it, so just kind of hang on yeah, to that sorry. question. I, I have a question that is a little yeah. bit different. So uh, you're right, I mean, a stream is a sequential data stream. Correct. Two streams is becomes a, a random workload. Correct. Sixteen stream is a highly random. It's a blender effect that we know Correct. very well. Yeah. So, is zone storage going to address this issue? Because you know, uh, like I have sixteen zones, so I address sixteen yes. different. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, and and I think I can actually show you a visual that'll bring that closer to home. But and and you're kind of getting there, right? Now, we are looking at all this unstructured data. It's not only there's intelligence in how the data is being created, but it's also at scale, so it's driving new data center constructs and how the infrastructure is being deployed, right, with open composable infrastructure where you can match compute to storage and, and mix them up to allow for multi-tenancy. So if we look at this, there can be a unified approach on how we naturally use this data intelligence to deploy storage that's irrespective of the medium type. It's applicable as much for the hard drives as it is for flash at the end of the day. So if you look at how that architecture will pull itself together, here's kind of one way, right? If you look at 
re-architecting to <coughs> take advantage of that data intelligence and intelligently place the data. Think of that as what zone storage enables. It starts with capturing the intelligence of the data workload at the source, enabling that through the, ser the serialization of it across both the application and the software stack down to the storage, irrespective of if it's HDD or if it's SSD. For HDD, Phil talked about this, like this builds on top of the SMR construct. For SSDs, it is built on top of what's called the ZNS or the zone name storage construct that's actually in the process of being standardized. SMR, of course, is being standardized across the various standard bodies. So if we leverage that, right, the investment is actually quite leveraged and uniform across the storage medium type. It's the architecture that scales itself across both HDDs and Flash. And now if I kind of take it a little bit further, and I said, yeah, it applies to both hard drives and SSDs. <coughs> I'll give you an example on the SSDs that may address some of the questions that you brought up. Right? Think of the composable storage. You have compute and their storage. It can be matched. There can be virtualized environments where you're supporting multi-tenancies, multi various workloads for the different applications. What zone storage allows for is allows for the host to use the intelligence at the host level all the way to the zone. And to the question earlier, the drive and of course the overall storage can be divided into zones and can be independently then used. Yes, and take advantage of the sequential nature to keep the data in, inside of those zones, is, is sequential, the, placed, and consumed. Is the garbage activity. collection for the flash within the zone level? I mean, or is it across all the zones? Or Okay. So hold the question, and I have the answer for you on that one right on the next chart, right? So at the end of the day, what does this allow us to do? It allows for a few things. If the application can actually place the data more intelligently on the drive, you're actually optimizing the garbage collection across both the translation layer, the file system and the application, as well as the drive. So what does that mean? You're actually collapsing the overall garbage collection. So you're not, the drive is not independently doing garbage collection to what the actual application layer and the software is doing. So it does collapse it to your point, so that the host can actually place the data, they can place the whole data, they can invalidate the whole data that reduces the overall garbage collection. What that does is it reduces write amplification. If you reduce write amplification, you get more efficiency out of the storage, you get better performance, more um, predictable performance and latency, and more life out of the device. Okay, I have a question. Yes. This is one drive. Correct. I array mm -hmm. as multiples multiple drives so I need a zone that it, that uh, is horizontal to all the drives so a, a small chunk of each single drive correct so it becomes a lot of objects to I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna see zone more from a direct access storage perspective rather than in an correct. array okay so if it's we, in an we, array we are, get, we are getting back at the previous Discussion. Discussion that this is a technology that is not for everybody. This is a this is not tied to an object, right? This is a conventional, it can be a direct storage. It's not tied to a lot of objects. You can, to your point, create a storage based on a series of zones with the confidence that you know how you're writing to these zones, you know how it's being written and um, consumed, either modified or or, uh, I'm not sure I've seen any it. storage system today that supports SMR protocols at the host interface level. Now, maybe I'm wrong. So I think we've seen one. I think we went to uh, one of those large, uh, you know, BYOD guys that's doing that, right? I'm not too sure you were in that. Now, this is a technology that we are actively working with our customers across the stack and it's being worked through to enable in the market. Obviously, this is new. We announced this technology and the initiative just last year. And that includes the standardization that's happening in the industry as well. So it leverages heavily with the SMR across the zones between both HDDs and Flash. 
And so it gets applied across the Could base. each zone be encrypted with a separate key and things of that nature? Nothing prevents that. OK, so everyone who's going to use this has to come up with their own secret sauce to do something <laughs> different. Is that right? Or it has to be like standardized? Yeah, this, this concept of zone namespaces is in the standardization process. OK. So it is open, and that is the initiative that we are firmly behind and we have been driving with our customers and our partners and the supplier base. Because from what I know, you guys are still pushing it as a standard <coughs> to MVME, right? It's, it's still not a standard yet. That is correct. But it's going through it. It's got broad traction, and it's a question of time and energy, and, and, and it's right. in the process. So it's not unique, and it, it's not a secret sauce that everyone has to do. And that really negates the purpose of being open and to drive innovation, right? So that's... That's our goal. We want it to be open and we want it to be used. Yes? It's for the video, not for the Yeah. The yellow box. Yeah. This yellow box depends on how the actual deployment structure sits. If it's all in <coughs> server, it can be as simple as this is a, a Linux operating system with the zoned NVMe uh, constructs that are enabled. can be as simple as that. Quick question. Yes. How is, it, how is this different from VASA? VASA negotiations. I don't know if I know the answer to that question. So. Then VMware VASA? Yeah. Uh -huh. Very yeah, similar. It's, it's a it's a it's a different technology altogether to some extent. So VAS is an API for VMware storage. Yeah. This is really a a low level description of how you can access an SSD. Different underlying storage of any kind. Okay. Thank you for answering that, Ray. Well, the the, the, the issue then is that uh, you know if you are developing a storage system and all these APIs, because every every time we talk about the new version of the APIs and VME APIs or whatever, so we are getting a lot of APIs coming, you know, to support, and you know, long time support. Some of them are disappearing from version 1.4, I think, of the APIs to 2.0. Of the so spec, it's becoming <clears throat> complicated for the for the ISV to support all of this. I mean. Why should I support this? Uh, what is, you know, my knowledge of, of the roadmap of, uh, you know, of the organization the... that is managing the standard that is, you know, not going it's to a, disappear? It's an NVMe so only? NVMe standard. It's an NVMe only starts, standard. Yes. That's where, the, that's where the innovation has started. But ultimately, why is answered by what is it delivered to the ultimate storage right, deployment, right? And if you kind of look at that, what we have found is clearly there's right amplification and garbage collection improvements. And what that does is actually reduces the overall provisioning that's required by a factor of 10 across the storage. So now the storage that you're actually deploying can be used for storing data as opposed to over provisioning to allow oh, yeah. for, right? Excuse me? So you're gonna be selling less. Or we'll be selling more. There's a hundred plus zettabytes coming our way. We just need to be ready for it, <laughs> right? So we just need to be efficient so we can actually deploy more, quicker, faster, more efficiently, and that's what it's about. Now, what it also allows for is it allows for efficiencies not just on the over-provisioning side, which in itself is a big deal, but it also allows for optimizing out DRAM in the stack, right? Because you're not doing garbage collection in two places. That allows for this 8x reduction in DRAM. So That's the, the second one. We're showing VMs in front of it. So are you working with VMware and other hypervisors? Um, are you working with them? Because I, I don't understand how their different software that the storage companies have worked for you know, a long time with them to make sure they get things to yeah. work with their storage systems. This is just the disk and the storage system. We're still looking at a VM, and we're still looking at an ultimate application, which is really what the business cares about. Yeah, and, and I think we, we talked a little bit about it. This effort is being standardized, both the stone storage, both on SSDs and HDDs, right? And it kind of gets us to this. It's an initiative that spans both. The SMR is getting standardized and is in the, across the various standard boards, is standardized on HDDs. ZNS is standardized through the NVMe. It's in that process at this point in time. 
So you apply that same construct of optimization across the storage, across all the media types. We talked about how it actually is in open, but at the same time, it actually allows our customers, our partners, and, our, and other suppliers in our space to work together to enable this, which is happening. It brings better performance. It reduces amplification and write management is improved, so it actually delivers better TCO. And it provides more intelligence on how we orchestrate the data placement and control across the software. So to answer your question, Gina, how is, these being, how is this going across to the rest of the community? It starts at the basics. Um, it starts with the standardization process that we are, of course, actively working. It then goes into the <coughs> initiative that we launched with zonestorage.io. We have tools and resources that we have made available on what the team has done at Western Digital to enable these set of technologies. This is an initiative that started out last year. The traction on it has been very encouraging. We have more and more customers and partners, including um, Do you have OS partners. Dumping in into this yes. initiative? Yes, uh, it, is, it, is, it is an industry standard, so it's, it's okay. broadly supported. So it's not, it's not something that's unique. And we expect that it's going to actually get across. Okay. And we're yes, seeing that traction. I haven't heard anybody traction. broadcasting it, talking well, about it. Early, early stages, and we're at the Good forefront of it. So you're point. probably hearing from us yeah. more than others. Okay. Uh, but it is happening, and it's happening quite actively with a lot of effort. And we've seen that uptick through the initiative. Now, that's, of course, one of the many dimensions. What that drives, to answer your question, Gina, is it actually drives the, the driver layer and then the OS layer, and that builds out in, in towards the, uh, to answering your question on enabling the various software stacks. That's on the zone uh, initiative. Of course, Phil today talked about the SMR. We have in the last um, you know, quarter, two quarters, talked about our NVMe SSDs and the family of SSDs that we've launched. And we have been actively working to enable the industry through a NVMe a ZNS platform to drive this process along. <coughs> and we're seeing, we're seeing, we're working actively on both the customers and the partner side and seeing the traction on it. So if I kind of step it back again, right, why zone storage? It's because it's really the new platform to enable better efficiencies for data center storage deployments at a better TCO at a larger scale. And it all comes from taking advantage of the intelligence that's in the data on deploying on how the data is actually stored on the, stored, the storage deployments. We are on the forefront with this technology. It is across both HDDs and SSDs. And the work that's being done right, is leveraged across both of those um, media types.